Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I have another special presentation ready for you today, and I want to go ahead and get right into the material here. Our first case uh, date here is June 17th, 1952, Hasselbeck, Germany. And we'll set up the scene here. Backstory is that there were two eyewitnesses for this particular case, and they were driving down the road on their motorcycle. So the father, the son, was in the sidecar of their motorcycle. And the primary witness's daughter saw this strange light off to the right hand, and they actually started walking up toward this clearing area where they saw two men that were standing not too far from what was described as being a quote unquote warming pan or a frying pan. This is June 17th, 1952, Hasselbeck, Germany. The craft was about 49 feet in diameter. Sources are MUFON Journal, November 1980, Hynek UFO Report 1977. Okay, so let's get back to the two men. There were two men that were sitting or crouching down near the craft like they were picking grass. One of them had this strange lighted bulb that was strapped to his chest that seemed to be flashing, and they were both wearing these kind of one-piece flight suits that were wrinkled that looked like they came from the mercury era something that was like a, a shiny wrinkled space suit that's what they were wearing now eventually these two men crawled up onto the rim of the disc and then popped up onto this what you can see in this first pass illustration here this black conning tower cylindrical in shape they disappeared inside this conning tower and the conning tower then slid down to the mid portion of the craft and then went right through the mid portion to the bottom and lifted the craft off the ground. At this point, it started rotating and flames started coming out of these ports and they just turned out to be a blur and there was this ring of fire going around the craft. Now we'll continue through here and I'll give you some additional references here. Here is the New York's world new city March 19th, 1983, and they have an interesting illustration here, but the two men that you see, they were not standing, they were crouching. And again, you can see this cylindrical conning tower coming up from the top. And then if you look around the outer circumference, there's two rows of cylindrical circular portholes rather than kind of these slots that you see here. So it says a close encounter from East Germany. And we'll continue on here with our presentation. Now, here are the two witnesses. This is Oscar and Gabriella Linke, image credit UFO Weekly News. And so these are the individuals that actually saw this. Uh, it's incredible that we actually have photographs of these people. And we have the original sketch. And you can see their sketch here with the two men off to the side and the left. Uh, and then this strange, what was described as a warming pan. And then this strange cylindrical counting tower coming up. Now we'll continue forward here. We'll get some additional illustrations. Now, here's what the craft looked like as it rose off the ground. The whole thing started rotating and then coming out from these double row of circular portholes was this glowing ring of flames. Just incredible, incredible, interesting, uh, interesting sighting for sure. Now, this is the original affidavit that was signed by the primary eyewitness. This is Oscar Linke. Uh, part of the sworn affidavit signed by Oscar Linke before a judge in West Berlin on July 1st, 1952. So we've got some good paperwork to back this up. We really do. And we've got newspaper articles as, as well. I'm going to show you that too. Here is the actual CIA report that you can get. So we've got the newspaper clipping. We've got the affidavit. We've got the CIA report. And this is published 9 July, 1952. And they go into this case in great detail. So this is something to further lend credibility to the case. So then, I, of course, I went and started digging and I thought, well, what newspaper clippings can I come up with? Here's the Times Tribune, July 2nd, 1952. And they go into this case in great detail. And I just want to read the bottom section here. Now, this is Gabriella. This is her statement here. Uh, his 11-year-old daughter confirmed the story in detail, quote, I was so terrified, I did not know what to do, she said. So 
Two eyewitnesses, credible eyewitnesses. Let's continue. What else do we have to back this up with? Additional information here. Here's one. Says he saw it take off. West is checking refugee story about flying saucer. The Charlotte Observer, July 2nd, 1952. So at least two newspaper clippings to back this up. Now, I could have added more, but I felt two was sufficient for this particular case. Now, I have a world exclusive for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Another world exclusive, and this is from my good friend Rudy Gardea. We recently completed this, and this is the first time this has ever been seen. So we got a world exclusive for you here, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next drawing, and here we go. This is it. So just think of this cylindrical craft with a conning tower, and then these double row of portholes with exhaust coming out of them, and then this top conning tower disappears into the craft, reappears on the bottom, it lifts the whole thing up, then the craft takes off, starts rotating, flames come out, and then what was on the bottom now retracts up through the mid portion of the craft and then is seen back on the top again as this thing flies away. So really good case and thanks for Rudy for the fantastic drawing and we're preserving an important part of our national history. All right, let's continue now. This is the one that we talked about before, but I've got another world exclusive for you here. This is June 1st, 1967, Richmond, Virginia. And here is another drawing by Rudy Gardia. Got to give him credit for making these cases come alive. Okay, so backstory, and we already talked about this one before, but seven-year-old boy was the primary eyewitness, and he was playing with his hatchet. He was actually chopping some young trees, and he heard this crackling noise kind of over his shoulder. He looks over, and he sees this interesting 13-foot diameter dish-shaped craft that he stated looked like a hubcap. It was the size of a Volkswagen, about 13 feet in diameter. So it's breaking through the tree branches and limbs at a 90 degree angle to the ground. And when it gets about 10 feet off the ground, this thing flips up and is now all four landing gear legs are pointing up toward the sky. With a little bit after that, it makes a 180 flip and now the landing gear are pointing down. It sits on the ground and he's about 10 feet away from this thing. Can you imagine what this thing looked like? Now, if you look closely, you can see these bug eye pop out headlights that came out of the craft. One was red and one was green. And somehow this thing flashed at the boy and he felt this horrible pain in his back. And he was like shocked about what was going on here. Now, next thing is Somehow this thing actually shocked him and there was this popping noise and this lever on the top went from the right to the left. He heard this popping noise and then he felt this shock on his body. He dropped the hatchet. He fell to the ground. Then this craft tipped up on one of the legs, spun around. It sounds crazy, but it's in the report. It spun around about three times and then started rising up vertically at that point, he had enough strength to run back into the house that you see in the left background here. His aunt saw the craft. So there were at least two eyewitnesses that, that saw the craft. And his mother rushed him to a nearby auto transmission station and stated that my son has been shocked by a flying saucer was her exact word. So June 1st, 1967. Interesting case and paperwork to back it up. Let's continue. Now, this is an interesting case. December 8th, 1967, Idaho Falls, Idaho. Reference for this is QFOS archives and NICAP. So I had to dig them out of there to get this uh, particular case. Now, I've got at least three separate cases, 1977, 1967. Uh, we also have a case in 1970 where people are reporting this circular dish-shaped saucer with a bubble transparency canopy on top and then two beings inside. This has been going on for at least three or four separate cases, all reporting the same type thing. Now, what kind of evidence do we have to back this up? Is there any sketches? Is there any drawings? Well, you know I did the, the legwork for you. Here's the original sketch from the report and we'll go down here and we'll start at the top. Like this when I first saw it. So the backstory is, uh, this young girl was waiting for a friend. She's inside. She goes out. Now, she, it was snowing. It was uh, cold outside, but she was waiting for a friend. It was about 7.40 p.m. So she goes out, and she can see the reflection 
of the snow of this strange craft that was kind of very brightly lit. As it got closer, she could see it was this circular shaped disc craft that had a bubble transparency canopy on top. There were two figures inside. It kind of rotated in her position and tipped down and she could make out the formation of two figures inside. She ran back inside to talk to her, uh, to get her sisters uh, to go out and see it. They were not uh, there at the time. She came back, it was still there, and she could see this thing fly away. But we'll start on the top here. Like this one, I first saw it very bright, when in uh, white in color, top not clearly seen. Next one, first tip down on left edge. I thought I could see two small figures through the glare. And then next, it turned around so whoever was inside were facing me. I became frightened and ran into the house. It hovered like this. And we'll move on to the next sketch here. All right, again, December 8th, 1967, original sketch. First view, brightly lit, white in color. Outline of bottom clearly defined, but top indistinct because of glare. Next one, first movement. Now you can see here it's tipping down, it rotated, and then off to the right here. Second movement, rotated clockwise as seen from bottom. And on this bottom section here, you can see where she was standing when she saw it. And then over here, first view estimated big as a car hovering near above house. So at least three to four cases of these dish-shaped craft with a bubble transparent canopy on it with these two figures. It's always two figures. Very interesting. We'll keep moving on here now. All right, next one. This is a very interesting case. August 1962, Lake Moville, Minnesota. Primary eyewitness was in a cabin when this first took place. So they're looking outside the window. She's actually combing her young daughter's hair at the time. That's the setup here. And she looks out this window and sees a 35 foot diameter dish shaped craft that had these very interesting triangular windows with rounded corners. And then inside the craft, she could see the outline of three humanoid looking beings. Um, what happened next is she turned off the light in the camera inside the cabin and immediately the light inside this craft turned out like in answer to her. At that point, she got up, she ran out the door, started walking, running down toward the pier, and then this thing took off. A very interesting, 35 feet in diameter. Now, what evidence do we have to back this case up? Well, I'm gonna hit you with the original sketch here. This is the actual drawing from the report, and this is April Bulletin, September, October, 1972. So I wanna give you these sources so that you can verify this information, so that you can get your own research and actually verify what I'm showing you because we're using the scientific pr principle here. And if everything lines up, you should be able to duplicate the same results that I'm getting here, just so that we can back this up. Now, let's move on to the next one. I really like this one. This is a really good one. So this is the Korean conflict, September, 1950. Now there's two fighter bombers seen by the crew of uh, three US Navy fighter bombers. And they were supposed to go on this strafing mission. So they look up because they had previously, previously seen this big shadow on the ground. And uh, they look up and they see these two massive dish-shaped craft that were estimated to be about 700 feet in diameter. I mean, just incredibly, this is back in 1950, 700 foot diameter dish-shaped craft because they originally saw the shadow. And I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide here and we'll do a blow up. Okay, now the they said in the report, the craft resembled a coolie hat. It was traveling at a speed of 1,000 to 1,200 miles an hour. It was actually confirmed by onboard radar. So we've got visual sighting, we've got onboard radar sighting during the Korean conflict, and there were multiple instances of this. So what can we look at next here? What can we see next here? Now, I want to give you an idea. This is a coolie hat. This is what these craft look like. 700 feet in diameter back in 1950. Ladies and gentlemen, who is flying these? Who is building these back in 1950? No visible means of propulsion, no wings, uh, no exhaust vents, no ailerons, no motors, <laughs> no tail fins back in 1950. Okay, now I wanna do this a little bit of enlargement here. 
it had a strange red ring around the upper portion of the craft, and there were these elongated slots going around the outer circumference of the craft. Now, what happened next is the object stopped, they backed up, they made this kind of a wobbling motion, and at that exact moment, ladies and gentlemen, the radar on the planes completely conked out. They were jammed, and they lost communication with the aircraft carrier. So this is a CE-1 case, and it's a CE-2 case because it has physical effects. Uh, it, it actually jammed the radar. So this is back in 1950. Now, what evidence do we have to back this particular case up? I want to provide you with the references. And here we go. This is Advanced Aerial Devices Reported During the Korean War by Richard Haynes, who was very good into these pilot cases. You've heard about the JL 1628 case. That's back in 1986. And this entire book is full of these type cases. So I just wanted to present you with some new cases that we really haven't covered really too much before. And again, we're preserving an important part of our national history through the use of illustrations. And I really do wanna thank everyone for their support. We're gonna continue with these uh, particular cases and presentations. I'm gonna dig even further into the archives. And again, I wanna thank you for your support and thank you again.